Are there any people outside, Sissy? No, you can start. Okay, we're going to get started with our quality panel. The title chosen for this panel was um, Quality ECPI of the Recorder. And uh, our panelists come from three different companies with different models. So they're going to explain how they're doing things in each company. We're going to have three short presentations with time for one or two questions in the team. But um, afterwards, we're going to uh, address a set of questions we prepared, and we'll be taking questions from the audience and answers from the audience as well, because what we want to do is to share experiences on this topic. And um, we're also getting some questions posted and on Twitter. So we'll have plenty of time to devote to this topic. Our first panelist is Sylvia. Adversi Beya. Um, she's a senior location manager at Verisign. She joined the company in early 2005, and she's been working with the um, international web team since. She's a native of Brazil, and she's been living in the States for the past 12 years. She started her localization uh, career in the Bay Area as a translator and interpreter. <laughs> And she has now more than 10 years of experience in the, in the industry. She's been a lecturer at several conferences and seminars. And she's also co founder of a um, professional nonprofit organization called Northern California Women in Localization. This is a forum for uh, professionals who want to develop a career in localization and share experiences. Um, she has a background in marketing, and she got her MBA at the San Francisco State University. Our second panelist is Eva Claudiova. She's the organization <coughs> manager at uh, VMware. She's based in Palo Alto, California. She's in charge of localization in Latin America, Asia and Pacific, Europe, Middle East, and Africa including a team of project managers and reviewers. She's also overseeing complete localization budgets, uh, localization processes, quality and terminology um, for the corporate localization department at VMware. She's a native of Slovakia, and she studied um, foreign language teaching, um, translation, and interpreting. She's been working in localization since 2000, and she has experience both on the vendor as well as on the client side. Uh, she's also co-founder of the uh, Northern California uh, Women in Localization. And our third panelist is Gatia Alcavera. <coughs> she's a language services manager for Zero Global Services, North American Operations. Uh, she's based in Rochester, New York. And she currently manages a team of 12 project managers, software engineers, and linguists. She has more than 24 years of experience in this industry. And um, she has a bachelor's degree in language and literature from the Rio de Janeiro State University. And she also got a master's degree with honors in strategic leadership from the Robert Swisslian College at Rochester, New York. So, ladies, the door is yours. Thank you. I just have a complaint. I don't know who chose this sequence, but it's very hard to follow Marcel. I just don't think it's fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about quality. And, you know, when we're doing a presentation, you want your slides to look good, so you check and you double check. You don't want to have any mistakes. But when you're talking about quality, you became paranoid. Because if you have a mistake there, it's not going to look good. It's going to be very ironic. So uh, first things first, let's talk about the company I work for. Um, it's 15 years old, very sign. Um, we last year did one million revenue. And we're mostly known by, uh, for security products, SSL certificates, and um, the CEO here, but um, we also manage the .com, .net, .tv, 
that jobs in that main domain. I decided to look up what quality means, just to give you, you know, there are other uh, meanings, but according to the Meridian Web's third dictionary, quality is a degree of excellence, a distinguishing attribute, or an acquired skill. Uh, the thing about quality is that when it's there, um, most people don't notice, but when it's not there, everybody notices. When we talk about linguistic quality, um, it's something difficult to define or measure, subjective, and can change depending who you ask. So like the theme of this uh, panel suggests, it's truly it's really on the eye of the beholder. Who never had that experience here? You have, you work with a language, everything goes well. Um, your, um, your reviewers are really pleased, they love your vendor, and then, you know, people move on, they go to other jobs, you have a new team looking at, um, looking at the translations, and guess what? Your French is horrible, your German is the worst, and it happens really, really often, and then you have to work the crowd again, you know, see how the person likes, and and sort of like fine tune on, on the style and preference of the new reviewer. Um, I went to a, a quality colloquium last year. That was also there. It was organized by Common Sense Advisory. Uh, they are an independent research firm that specializes in our industry. And one of the things they talk about is the gap that there is between how buyers perceive, uh, how buyers per perceive, thank you, perceive quality and how vendors perceive, in the sense that what is important for one side and what is important for the other side. And one thing I found interesting is that vendors underestimate the importance of customer service. Uh, and I have the buyers, I'm a buyer, so it is really, really important to us, and it can change how we perceive the quality of what you're delivering, how fast you respond, and, and how serious you take our feedback. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, our approach to quality, just a little bit of history. Um, I've been with Verisign for five years, but the first three years I was a senior web producer. I was a web producer. And it's been two years that I, I'm doing localization. And when I started at Verisign, there was no localization team. So we sort of like, it's interesting because we saw uh, things you know, from the very beginning and then we brought a localization manager, which happens to be Eva. And she stayed with us for almost a year. Year and three months. She spiced up things and then she left. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't do. Uh, we don't have a very large budget, so uh, most of the things that we do, it's it's grassroots and it's painful and it's, it takes time, but it's very challenging as well. And, and I, I think I'm in a very uh, interesting position to be seeing all this growth. And we always did localization. We have a style guide. We have glossaries. There are living documents. So we had also some feedback that came from the reviewers. But this year, we're really speeding up the quality. So I would say that we are in the beginning, you know, and, 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 and there is a reason why we're presenting in this order. So I'm really like the kid here that is starting to put quality in a different uh, level at Verisign. But we're in the beginning. Some of the things that we are starting to measure, um, who is familiar with the Lisa QA model here? Can you show me hands. So most of you are familiar. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel, so we just took you know, what is out there. And we... <laughs> adapt for Verisign. 